And welcome to Desk Lady Ada. Hey everybody, welcome to the Desk Lady Ada. It's me, Lady Ada. We're having a long weekend here in America, at least. So uh, it's starting a little late because tomorrow is a weekend day extra. Yeah, Although Memorial we're still kind of working. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, you know, it's a day of uh, remembering people who sacrifice their lives to keep this country safe. So we want to be respectful of that. It's also, for a lot of people, a day off. So... Please uh, be Big safe. Barbecue holiday. Be safe tomorrow, yep. and uh, continue to do all the things to keep us getting back on track. So, okay, the engineering doesn't stop. What are you doing? No, although I did, you know, I did a little some board layouts. I sent out that prototype panel that you posted, which included um, the keyboard that I showed a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm I'm a little bit behind on my new board designs and I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a pause but I'll, I, it's still happening it's just like I'm kind of distracted with other engineering things some software um, and architecture stuff uh, so let's uh, start off with I got some keyboard samples wait <coughs> yeah sneeze <coughs> pardon me um, yeah. all right well I got the overhead going here. okay so um, well, let's, start, let's start with it so I got some samples of these molds for making uh, silicone keycaps, and like my first attempt was like a total, total failure. The, the, it didn't cure because I didn't realize that um, this is UV curing resin. So these are silicone molds, and you know when you you can you can mold keys in them. So these are just some clear. I put some chips in in some clear resin, and um, they're two part molds. So this is uh, you know it's it's like a, a one and a half length key, like a shift key or like a, a control key. And then these are like single one by one keys. And then you've got this, um, this top, which has the, the cross shape that you would put as a stem on a, a Cherry MX key. So I, I got some samples of um, these key molds. And the only thing that's a little annoying is you have to kind of center them. Like there's no, they're, they're, they're not like some nice molds have um, like centering dots. So you have to kind of like align these right. But other than like, there's two basically two resins you can use. You can do a two-part epoxy hardening resin where you do like 50% of one, 50% of the other. It's just like glue epoxy, uh, except it's not sticky. It's, it's a resiny. And um, you mix them together and it hardens and it takes like a day. And I was like really lazy. I didn't want to do that. So I got UV curing epoxy, which is a lot more expensive. Um, but these are very small keycaps, so it doesn't matter. And also, it's not good for large items. You want to use UV epoxy for smaller items because of the... It just doesn't cure very well for, for big things. But for small things, it works great. And turns out we have, you know, we have a disinfection UV light from folks who remember we were doing some disinfection lamp experiments. Yeah. Back in ago. March of last year, all of us are like, what, what are we going to do? And so we got UV And LEDs, we thought it was surfaces, right? We so got yeah. UV lamps, and then we got a tester because it turns out not all this stuff actually worked. Yeah. And then we did a video on that, and everyone screamed at us, well, as in the version of screaming, on the internet and they're like you're gonna die it's like no like w we had goggles on don't worry yeah it's fine anyways so the the uv lamps that are used for disinfection are actually not good for curing uv resin as i found out after like hours of poking it and be like why isn't it curing um but this lamp that we made this uv this was a, a becky a yeah, pedro project so this is a 3d this was printed to, to nail cure nail stuff yeah. it's nail it's a nail lamp right it's like a diy nail lamp yeah. And you can see that there's um, a perma proto. We, we started in like a ton of UV LEDs and we blast them. And then there's this nice reflection material. And by the way, the keycap what? community is on a direct collision course with the nail community because I've seen lots of resin nail stuff. It's all the same stuff, too. It's all the same it's, stuff. It's all the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so we've got, um, uh, we've got this uh, UV um, lamp. Sorry, I was like, what are you doing, Phil? Uh, it's this UV lamp made with LEDs, and so this is like a five-year-old project, but I brought this out, and what's funny is just like coincidentally, this fits perfectly here. So it's like, you know, you can, you can cure exactly one package worth of, of keys. So I tried it, and it, you know, m middling success. So um, because it didn't cure, I, I didn't, you know, it took me a while to realize it wasn't curing. These keys have like mega bubbles in them, so and this one, um, the, it didn't cure all the way, and so it's it's a key, but it's like it's kind of like weird and mutant, and like yeah. the stems came out great. I really learned how to do the stems, which is you want to, um, 
they got all the bubbles out of the stems and they, they look perfect and they're beautiful. Yeah. A lot and of then, times, so by the way, like one of our jobs at Ifruit is to make all the mistakes and find all the failures so you don't have to. That's why you pay us. Yeah. So these <laughs> keys, like, here's what, here's these what two came do. out pretty good though. So this one has an embedded, what did I put in here? RP2040 yeah, chip. Now this is an espresso chip. This is an ESP8266 chip or something. This is a SAMD21 B18. So I'm sure people are going to tell me like how I'm, I'm, I'm the fault of the, the chip shortage because I'm using the chips for, for keycaps. And these were these were chips that were they were dirty, so they were they're not good. But um, they they fit fine, you know. They they fit fine on on uh, this macro pad. Yeah, it looks good. So they're cool and they're clear. There there's a little bit of bubbling in them. Um, you can kind of barely see, but there's a couple spots. It, it is a little noticeable, but that's... I wanted to go easy we, with... It's not, also clear. It's so clear. Like, yeah. So normally you would have, you know, some glitter or like jewels or gems or something, and it would actually kind of hide a little bit of the um, um, the, the bubbles because you'd have all this material yeah, so that so would make it... Vacuum. I don't have a vacuum, vacuum pump, these pump out, machine. Yeah. I don't have a vacuum pump. I have I have like a nail art thing. You know what I mean? So uh, let's see. Don't resins usually have the wavelength they cure at listed? Should make it easier to find the right. Light. I know, but it says UV. UV. Like it doesn't have like an mm. exact nanometer length. Anyways, so I'm gonna try again with. I, I did clear because I was like, look, I want to make sure that it's not because I couldn't tell if it was my first round didn't cure because of the materials, like I put glitter and shit in it. I didn't know yeah. if it was because of the glitter that was blocking the, the UV from curing it or if it was actually like a mismatch of the lamp. And it turns out, because it said like you can use a UV lamp, but obviously you shouldn't. You should really uh, just use UV. Apparently the aquarium least. pump works pretty well too. Well, maybe. That's the yeah. thing. The, the lamps, that, I mean, I don't know. They're disinfection lamps. I think they're, they're the wrong nanometer. Uh, all I know is the LED, like this cured it in like a minute. Whereas yeah. I was putting it under this lamp that was 11 watt lamp for like 30 minutes, twice, three times, and it just never cured. Mm. So I'll, well, you know, the next round will be good. And then the cool thing is, is that if you do it right, like not like this one, which was kind of like a little bit of a nasty disaster. Um, this one, which did get cured, it's completely reusable. Like it completely yeah. pops out super clean. When do you use a heat gun with any of this stuff? Ever? I used the heat gun a little bit to remove some of the bubbles, which like worked a little bit, but it only works on bubbles that are at the surface. It pops surface bubbles. Oh. I think a lot of it is how you pour the resin. If you if you if you like, you just have to have experience on how to pour it to make sure that you don't pour a bubble. Like I think you have to squeeze the bubble out, and then once it's pouring, then you stick the tip into the resin mold because that way you don't have air bubbles. Like there, there's there's a technique. Anyways. So this kit is something that we're going to stock, but it comes with a couple different shapes. This is very generic. I mean, you can also get these like on Amazon and Etsy has them, but there's one with like a kitten, kitten paws. So that's kind of fun. And then um, there's one for space bars and stuff and like large shift keys and things. So this would not, of course, fit inside the the LED light, but I could do small keycaps or I could just get a bigger LED light. So this comes in all sorts of different shapes and like OEM and R4 and like all that nonsense. I'm gonna pick just like ones that make sense and um, we'll probably stock them in the shop, but I wanted to try it out. But it worked, I mean like this was like kind of fun. Like it didn't, yeah. like once you have the right curing lamp, it, it's you're done in five minutes. The, you know, you just, you wanna pour, you wanna cure the stem, cure the bottom, and then you can, pour all sorts of nonsense in here, like, you know, microtrollers yeah. and glitter and shit. Okay, anyway, so that was fun. Um, I also got a sample of a service. There's a company that they make um, keycaps that are etched through. And I was thinking of trying to get these so you could, like, laser etch. I don't know if these are fiber laser etched, but, you know, you can't quite see it here, but then if I take this off the only thing is my leds are on the bottom you can sort of yeah you can sort of see that it glows through and it has like this etched out shape in this case it's a it's you know korean heart hands um let me just get another one that's maybe a little bit more easy to look at but this was just they were sending these samples of what they can do so we could have like an Adafruit keycap, basically. 
and uh, and possibly also sell like the ready to laser etch ones. That would be ideal. I'm not sure how lucky I'm going to be in in that though. Okay, so this is another example. That's nice. Little 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 dudette. I don't think I have this. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I don't have this um, set up to do the, the key color cycling. So this is, this is yellowish, and then, you know, if I put it down here, this one is kind of a, a purplish color. Yeah, but it would basically glow through, glow through yeah, keys. Yeah. So, so that's that. Um, this is my little macro pad tester. Um, all right, so there's some samples. Any, any questions? No, people like the keys. Yeah, I'm just kind of messing around with keys, just, just playing with these samples and ideas. Uh, okay, so the next thing is, uh, so I got some enclosure samples as well. So one thing is I want to make a keyboard PCB, right? I want to do, you know, a large, like a custom circuit Python keyboard. That's, that's, I have the macro pad and this is definitely going to happen, but this macro pad is, it's just 12 keys uh, in an OLED. I mean, this is fun. It's, a, you know, you, you want this. But maybe you want something a little bigger. So I got some samples of, um, let's go to me because it's not going to fit under the overhead. So these are GH60 cases. So this is an injection molded case. It's a very generic case. It's got some bosses that you can find here. And it, it's only a couple dollars, so it's kind of nice. Just It's like it's cheap. It's not totally flat. I will, I will agree. It's not like the flattest case. But like if you want to build a keyboard and you're not, you're not quite ready for like the $60 aluminum case. This is a nice, I like this, it's like translucent and they come in different colors and it's just simple injection molding. And then um, I also got a sample of um, solid aluminum milled and then anodized. So this is of course a yeah. blink of purple. You could you could etch this with a laser and then Yeah, also, this is etchable. Um, we wanted, you know, we're gonna do a keyboard kit and we thought since everything is Circuit Python based, uh, we'd start off with the purple one purple. and then we'll do limited purple. colors and then we'll try, you know, other purple. stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, of course you can get these anodized in any color. That That's not the, the tough part. Um, although there's like jewel tones are kind of most popular. And then I also got a sample of a um, keyboard that goes with it. So this is, these are called GH60, I think Geek Hack or something is the name of the website. So I got, I'll show the PCB on the overhead because that's, that's got details to it. So this uh, PCB, you want to... Yeah. Uh, someone asked a question. I answered yeah. it in the chat, but they said, is there like, you know, OLED keys? There is, but they're like 50 bucks they're each. They're so expensive. Yeah. And I think they just break. And also, like, yeah. by the way, OLED, you don't want them on all the time because they'll, they'll dim. Yeah. So it's this a is, cool demo. Like, yeah. look, the future, but like, yeah. not quite yet. So this is, this is uh, like a, a, a socketed, you can, you can kind of see there's sockets. Kale, these are Kalo Getter on sockets. And this fits, you know, nicely in the enclosure. So this fits in the enclosure. I will say I had to make a slight modification to this PCB to make it fit. Uh, these are from two different companies. One makes the aluminum enclosure and one is like, okay, we'll make a PCB that fits in it. So there's one mounting spot here. This mounting hole, this gold ring matches with this hole. And because this has like a wide boss to it, um, this socket, I had to actually cut and then we solder by hand. Like you can, you can barely, you can't see it, but like basically I, I, I cut it and then sort of hand soldered it. So there's something I have to think about if I design a PCB that fits into this case, cause it's like this PCB was designed for it and it didn't fit. So I'm just like, how are people supposed to use this? But I'll, I'll make sure it doesn't, that doesn't happen. Uh, this is got a USB-C. So I'm learning a little bit. This is like the first like keyboard kit PCB I purchased. So I, this is kind of a good learning opportunity to see what what are, the, what's, what are people doing in the industry so I can do, in my opinion, a better job. So USB-C, which I'd like. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting, and of course, you know, so gather on sockets. There's LEDs for each board. And even though they look a lot like our reverse mount NeoPixels, they are not NeoPixels, which you can see if you, um, let's see if I can, zoom in i mean it's tough to tell but you see how in the middle of the led there's no black dot like if this was a neopixel you see how there's like a there's a little black dot there 
it's tough. But like if you if you're you know in bare eyes, you can definitely see it. And with these, there is none because these are not actually NeoPixels. These are RGB LEDs. The four the four legs are anode, you know, red, green, and blue. So these are not NeoPixels. Why? Because NeoPixels are kind of expensive. Like if you're only if you only need like ten or twenty LEDs, RGB LEDs. Um, a NeoPixel is going to be like the simplest because you only need one pin and it's like they just work and it's full color and the PWM is handled for you and like love it, love it, love it. But when you get to something like this, which has 60 plus LEDs, a 61 key keyboard, it, it really adds up because if they're like, you know, 10, 15 cents a piece, before you know it, you're spending 10 bucks just on the LEDs. So instead, these are RGB LEDs, not NeoPixels. RGB LEDs, just raw RGB LEDs in quantity are like a penny or two. Like they're much, much cheaper and it, it definitely makes a difference when you get to these large quantities. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. How are they driving this? Um, and down here you can see the microcontroller. So the microcontroller is a, uh, I think it's an STM, let's see, STM 32F303. So, I, you know, I didn't actually look up this part number, but it's basically a Cortex M3. I'm sure the 3 is for M3. Um, STM processor. It doesn't have a ton of pins. It's like a 48 QFP. It's got the crystal. Oops. Got a little bit of a, I think it's probably a buck converter. Give it three volts or something, or, or maybe it's a booster. I don't, I don't think so, though. It's probably a buck converter. And then over here, oh, this is kind of fun. There's like a little DFU switch, so you can switch it into bootloader mode. There's the... There's a ROM DFU bootloader that comes with every STM32 chip. We actually don't have, um, we don't have a uh, circuit Python for the STM32 F303, I think, but I'll look. If we do, I could try putting circuit Python on this and it would probably just work. And then there's this chip, which I was like, obviously this has to be the RGB LED driver because there's nothing else going on on this. Like, it's like there's only one chip and that chip is going to do the LED, the, the key matrix. And so this must be the LED driver. And this turns out to be a, um, this is the uh, SC3741. Sounds familiar. We have a monochrome PWM LED driver from the SC, the SC1331, uh, whatever. It's, it's part of the series. It's just a lot of ones and threes and fours um, and sevens. So we're familiar with this family. It's, an, it's almost certainly an I2C controlled RGB LED driver. I looked at the data sheet and it can drive like a massive number of LEDs all on its own. It's not cheap. It's like two bucks, but it does all the work for you. And you probably, when you do the math, it's still cheaper to have the driver for two bucks and RGB LEDs than to have NeoPixels. Cause again, the NeoPixels are expensive. Um, and you can definitely save a couple bucks on the chips by, um, by doing this. And also they, these probably are better quality LEDs too. They probably serve like NeoPixels. I find they, they can be a little picky. They they can you know they can have difficulty surviving the the rework um, or uh, reflow process. So I thought that was kind of interesting to learn. And then there's the USB C. One thing that I thought was interesting. I'm not sure why they did it. Is the um, the LEDs are below the keys, right? Which is actually not how you're supposed to do key switches, as I learned from looking at uh, keycaps. Like we got some samples of. Uh, you know, backlight through keycaps, they're actually expecting the LED to be on the top. So one thing I'm gonna make sure that I do when I design mine is is, the, is this should be flipped around 180. The LED should be shining through the top of the key, not the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. But I still like that. This is a, a pretty nice design. They did a good job. I just don't, I don't know if there's a good reason for why they, why they did that. Yeah, we'll find out. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's that. So one thing I did see that I wanted to chat about is, uh, and then we can we can go to the great search now. We can answer some questions. Oh and, no, let's go to great search. Right? Okay. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DigiKey. The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Ada Frit. Thank you so much, DigiKey, for Spartan, Desk Lady Ada. Great search is when Lady Ada uses all her powers of engineering and smarts to show you how to find stuff on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search for this week? Okay, well, this is going to be an, an easy, easy but goody. Uh, so looking at this um, keyboard matrix, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of, include a diode, sorry, an LED for each board, uh, each key. So this is the key, and then there's an LED above it, and there's also a diode. Uh, so this is a diode matrix keyboard 
which means that you don't have a key ghosting when you press multiple keys at once. Um, you know, for macro pads, it might not be that important, but dies are really inexpensive and you just add one per key and it means that you can detect each individual key press no matter what combination are pressed. And especially for people who do gaming, it's not un unusual to have multiple keys pressed at the same time. Uh, you don't want there to be um, ghost keys that appear. So let's, let's go to the computer and I'll actually show I saw like a kind of a nice a site. This is a uh, gammon.co.au. Um, so this is how normal low cost matrices are made. You've got um, the uh, columns and you've got the rows and you've got these little switches. You know, you test each row, you set each uh, row high. And when the, this is pressed, um, this signal, um, sorry, this signal by default is pulled low. And then when it's pressed, it goes high, and that's how you know that this button is pressed. So you just you, you can you can scan through the whole matrix to find out very quickly uh, which keys are are pressed. Um, but what's nice, uh, what's what's not good about this is that if you have and there's here's a nice little diagram. If you have three keys pressed and they overlap on the column or row, the the fourth key that's like the cross intersection of where those three keys meet, that extra key will appear as if it was being pressed, which is, again, not a good idea. If you're just doing something like a telephone keypad where people only press one button at a time, not a big deal. You know, you can save eight cents, not include diodes. But if you're doing um, any other kind of key matrix, like this person was actually hacking an existing key matrix to add diodes because they were frustrated by the, the key ghosting effect. So to avoid it, all you have to do is add one diode per switch, and that just means that the current only goes one direction. You can't have the current flow back through and accidentally trigger another key. So um, what diode to use? Well, you know, the 1N4148 is a classic. It's, it's, a, it's not just, you know, it, it's a little cliche, but it's also just a really good diode to pick. Why? It's incredibly plentiful. It's very fast. Uh, it has a reasonable forward voltage. It's super cheap. You can get it anywhere. It comes in all sorts of packages. Did I mention it's cheap? It's heckin' cheap. And and again, like you don't have to worry about not, like if all the chip shortages and component shortages, you're never gonna run out of the 1N4148s. Sometimes also people use 1N914s. It's a very similar family. And I'll say that there's a lot of diodes out there and diodes that you can get Zener diodes and you can get Schottky diodes and, and et cetera, et cetera. You only just want a small signal diode. You know, you don't need a 1N4001 um, power diode. Um, it's not going to be as fast. It's not going to be as inexpensive. It's not going to be as easy to solder. It's not going to be as small. Go with the classic, the 1N4148. You're not, you're not going to type any faster with a different diode. This diode is, is nanosecond speed. So, Let's go to um, DigiKey and check it out. So we can just search for 1N4148. And uh, what's interesting is actually they'll show you some, some top searches. You can actually like click on these just to get started. But let's actually go and just see all the options available um, real fast. So we're going to go with active and in stock because we're, we're going to buy these right now to make our keyboard kit. We want about a hundred of them because we want like one for each um, switch. And um, next, the only important thing is, is the package. Do we want surface mount or through hole and which size? So if you're going to make a, um, like a macro pad like this one, which we found on clawboards.xyz, you'll see it's really common. You'll see that all the diodes are over here in, in a row and they're through hole and they've got these little glass bodies with a black stripe and, and red glass. So you can even sort of see the 4.8 very lightly on here. So if you're using the glass side, the gla glass beaded ones with um, leads that you solder, those are called DO35. So you'd pick through hole, and then I think it's, there's really only like one or two sizes. Yeah, so there's there's basically die, which is, I don't know, like a small chip, and then DO35. There's two options for DO35, axial. So let's pick those. And like, boom, all the diodes you can want. Now, 
every single company that does semiconductors, like the first thing they do is they make a diet because it's like the easiest, cheapest thing to make. You might as well get good at manufacturing and taping components by making a diet. Can't go wrong. So you have a lot and a lot of options for diodes. Um, which ones to pick? Well, you can look at prices at, you know, 100. So you go up here and you enter in how many you want. And then you click, you know, apply. And it'll show you the, the lowest price ones for that quantity. On semiconductor, you know, classic Motorola, um, they're going to have about a million in stock. And they'll be about three and a half cents a piece. So that's a good deal. And you can get, like, you know, any, any quantity you want. They'll come on tape, so you know it's one wheel, and you just pull them off the tape, and, and you're ready to go. So this is this is a perfectly fine diode. Love it. Um, let's say you want to do, you know, and again they have these are all different photos, but they're all the same thing. You know, microchip makes diodes, um, Vichy makes diodes, NTE makes diodes. They all, everyone makes diodes. You want diodes, you got them. All for about three to four cents. So let's go to the overhead for this keyboard controller to make the manufacturing easier they don't use the through hole the through hole is easier for humans much tougher for machinery so this is a uh diode that's sod 123 size you're probably like how do i know what size it is well first off i just deal with the size of diode all the time but you also google for diode sizes and um and my computer can you uh go back over there yeah go back to the computer if you look for diode sizes, there's there's all sorts of um, like comparison photos and like this is a good one. Maybe there's lots of, of pics available that will compare um, the different. This is not a good image because these are not to scale. You want a to scale image. This this is down. The internet barely works anymore. Hold on. Let me find a, you can just view this image. Well, it's small, but you can kind of see it. So there's SMC, SMB, SMA, SOD-123 and SOD-123FL. A SOD-123 is kind of like the easiest to hand solder um, but we, you can still get a wide range of signal diodes. SMA and SMB and SMC, they're, they're power diodes. You don't really want those. So let's look for um, SOD-120. And this was this also a really good image here because this shows you the comparison. I use 323 and 123, but 323, they're a little tiny. They're good for, again, a pick-and-place machine. does a great job with them, but for a human... I'd say 123. So let's look for um, this in 123. So we're going to do, we're going to um, delete this filter and this filter and these two. Okay, and then now when we look for the packages, we're going to do surface mount instead of through hole, because we want to pick and placeable. And then, yeah, over here we have 123, 323, and 523. Again, it's a little confusing, but the bigger the number, the smaller the package. Eh, you know, what are you going to do? Um, the F and FL just mean how thin they are. So you can, they're, they're basically equivalent. So let's pick the SOD 123 and 123F together. And um, ditto, let's look at pricing at 100 pieces or more. And then uh, we've got this one. I mean, you're not going to, you know, this it's a very tiny picture. But it looks like you can, you know, there's not... Um, oh, wait, hold on. They do you have, oh, this is a, um, sorry, this is a marketplace. So let's exclude that. So you can basically get these for about six cents a piece. So they're more expensive, which is interesting. Like they really want you to buy a full tape and reel, like a full reel of these, um, surface mount diodes. But again, if you're doing a pick and place design, you really need to have, you know, some of these. So I would, I would probably just pick up you know, one of these or one of these. I think if, if you're getting a reel, which is a thousand quantity, yeah, they're like three cents or so, three, six cents. Oh, wait, hold on. This didn't apply. 
Oh, I did apply. Weird. I don't know why I didn't come through. Um, you can also search by stock number and it looks like Viche. These ones, they have about 188,000 in stock and they're about, again, four cents a piece. So diodes, they're great. They're wonderful. Do you know, like, you know, they're not super cheap, right? Four cents does add up. Um, but when you're, if you end up getting like really large quantities, I think they go down to like a penny or two and you kind of do need them. Like, if, especially if you're, if you're making a macro pad, you might be able to get away with not having them. But for a keyboard where the humans are typing on, you really don't want any errant keys to come out. And there are, I have seen people like post up, um, matrix maps where they try to tell you here, if you pick these keys on your rows and columns, you're least likely to have key ghosting. Um, but if you're going to make a keyboard and you're going to sell it, people are going to probably pretty much demand that you have individually diode protected keys. So one and four and four, eight, I don't know. It's a great diode. Uh, used it for decades. Never done me wrong. Good everyday signal diode. It's a great turn. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. Okay. A couple of uh, things I will uh, answer or ask. Yeah. Um, so there's a company that uh, will print out things on top of keyboards. SVG. I'll mm. put a link in the chat. Mm. It's uh, WASD keyboards. Yeah. Um, for other things, a vacuum chamber might help with the bubbles. Best carrying wave wavelength might be 320 to 400 nanometer. And then for the uh, LEDs, some keyboards have LEDs above the switch so the legends shine. Others have LEDs below because certain keycap profiles will only fit with the switch in that orientation. Weird. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah, this is the thing. It's like most, most keys. I mean, why would they only, they're supposed to be fully symmetric. I mean, every every key I've seen that has glow through, it's from the top. It's it's the keys on the top, which makes sense because your finger would be covering it otherwise. Because your finger covers the bottom of the key. So if you want to see the key before you press it, okay. then so, you'd have the legend on the top. Uh, would it be possible to create a library to make this LED driver chips compatible with the NeoPixel libraries? No, totally different. Totally different. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Questions. Okay. Uh, all, right. all right. That is a desk Thank you, everybody. Tonight. We'll see everybody during the week. We have shows. Uh, there's no shows on Monday yes. usually, so everything is normal this week as far as shows go. And uh, we'll see everybody Tuesday, JP's show. Yes, yeah, so and we're back on Wednesday. Wednesday, so we've got Noah Pedro's 3D Hangouts and then yeah. Show and Tell and then Ask an Engineer. And then uh, Thursday, we have JP's Workshop on Friday, Deep Fab Scott. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.